Welcome to my YouTube channel Edu Infi Learning. Today we are going to discuss NEET MTS questions. So let's start. Which of the following techniques is commonly used to increase the height or width of the alveolar ridge in preparation for dental processes? That is ridge augmentation. So ridge augmentation in deficient alveolar ridge areas are achieved by block graft, either autogenous or allograft, or by guided bone regeneration, distraction, osteogenesis, and alveolar ridge splinting. Next, what is primary purpose of a crown lengthening procedure in pre-prosthetic surgery? That is to expose more of the tooth surface. It is used to enhance aesthetics and provide adequate structure for placement and retention of a restoration. Which of the following technique involves the removal of excess gingival tissue to expose more tooth structure for restorative purposes? That is gingivectomy. So gingivectomy is the section of unsupported gingival tissue. So gingivectomy is also used to remove hyperplastic gingival tissue and this technique is used to eliminate periodontal pockets which are greater than 5 mm d. Next, what is the primary function of the dental lamina during the tooth development that is initiation of tooth formation. So dental lamina is first evidence of tooth development that begins at 6th week of intrauterine life. Dental lamina proliferates into underlying ectomesenchyme and forms u-shaped band along the future dental arches in each jaw. Next, which of the following cells are involved in the repair of damaged dental pulp? The answer is fibroblasts. So these fibroblasts are able to secrete and respond to cytokinins, chemokines and growth factors to maintain the homeostasis of dental pulp. So they are important in tissue repair and regeneration. What is the function of Sharpe's fiber? So Sharpe fiber anchor cementum to alveolar bone. These are collagenous fibers and they anchor cementum to alveolar bone and provide stability to tooth within socket, within a socket. What is the function of enamel tuft? Enamel tuft facilitate enamel mineralization. So these enamel tufts are hypomineralized enamel rods and they extend from dental enamel junction into enamel and they may facilitate mineralization process. So enamel tuft run along the longitudinal axis of the tooth. In contrast to enamel spindles, enamel tuft follows the direction of, of the enamel rod. So enamel tuft follows the direction of enamel rods. Next, which of the following is true regarding enamel prism orientation? So enamel prism runs perpendicular to the surface. These enamel prisms or rods are basic structural component of enamel and they originate from dentino enamel junction and they extend to the thickness of enamel surface. In cross sectional area they, they appear as keyhole. Which of the following is true regarding reparative dentine? So answer is it is characterized by irregular dentine deposition. So reparative dentine uh, is formed in response to injury or caries and there is irregular dentine deposition. Which enzyme is involved in the mineralization of dentine matrix? So answer is alkaline phosphatase. Also alkaline phosphatase plays a key role in the mineralization of dentine matrix by hydrolyzing phosphate ester bonds. Dentine mineralization process involves the formation and growth of hydroxyapatite crystals in extracellular matrix. Type 1 collagen accounts for 90% of the extracellular matrix of dentine. That's all for today. Do like and subscribe to my video for your preparation. Thanks you all.